Welcome to this webinar on OECD's system of mutual acceptance of data and good laboratory practice. This webinar will provide you an overview of the framework for mutual acceptance of data. The OECD was established in 1961 and currently has a membership of 38 countries. Work at the OECD is conducted through a structure formed of a council of ambassadors, committees and working parties, and the OECD secretariat. One element of the OECD work are OEC standards. These are used to promote shared values, good policies and practices in both domestic and international settings. The OECD is not a regulatory body. So for example, in the context of good laboratory practice, it does not certify certify GLP compliance of the test facilities. It is also not a supranational organization. However, it is an international organization where countries come together to adopt consensus-based decisions regarding particular policy issues. The OECD Environment, Health and Safety Program is our program on chemical safety and biosafety. Within the program, we work with member countries, partner countries and stakeholders to improve protection of human and health and the environment from chemicals and, and in regards to biosafety. Along with improving this protection to human health and the environment, efforts are made to make chemical control policies more transparent and efficient and to save resources for government and industry. Through convergence towards harmonized approaches, this also helps to prevent unnecessary distortions in the tr trade of chemicals, chemical products and products of my modern bio biotechnology. The work uh, outputs of the chemical safety, safety program can be found on our website at oecd.org slash chemical safety. Now to the framework of mutual acceptance of data, otherwise known as MAD or MAD. This is a framework that, has, that is based on three OECD Council Acts that have been implemented between 1981 and 1997 and build upon each other in a progressive fashion. In 1981, Council put into place the initial decision on mutual acceptance of data. And this articulated that if a study is conducted using OECD test guidelines and following OECD principles of good laboratory practice, then there would be mutual acceptance of data. This was put into place to ensure the quality of non-clinical health and environmental safety studies for regulatory purposes. And it also avoids duplication of testing by industry. So essentially, the Council Act states that data generated in the testing of chemicals in an OECD member country in accordance with OECD test guidelines, the test methods, and OECD principles of good laboratory practice, the quality standards, shall be accepted in other member countries for purposes of assessment and, use, and other uses relating to the protection of man and the environment. As mentioned earlier, the scope of MAD pertains to non-clinical health and environmental safety studies for regulatory purposes. Products included under the mutual acceptance of data include industrial chemicals, pharmaceuticals, pesticides, biocides, veterinary drugs, food and feed additives. And in some countries, uh, medical devices are also included. Mutual acceptance, the mutual acceptance of data works as follows. For example, we, here we have country A, which has generated chronic toxicity test results for a particular substance. The results of uh, this study can be submitted by industry to regulated, regulators in country B, C, and D when they are part of the mutual acceptance of data system. And, they, and these uh, studies then need to be uh, accepted by these uh, regulators. Conversely, if country B 
produces an uh, aquatic toxicity uh, test uh, result in a GLP uh, facility, then this can be submitted to regula regulator in country A. So really the aspect, the key aspect is no repeat testing. However, the interpretation of the test results is a government prerogative, as are any testing results that a country may put into place for its chemicals management framework. One portion of the 1981 Council decision on MAD is are the OECD test guidelines. We won't be going in, part in particular detail through the aspects of the OECD test guidelines program in this presentation. However, there are currently more than 150 OECD test guidelines. These are agreed upon test methods at the international level that cover different properties um, or endpoints. So for example, physical chemical properties, effects on biotic systems, degradation and accumulation, health effects, and also other test guidelines, for example, re relating to residue chemistry or biocide efficacy. In the 1981 Council decision on MAD, uh, it was also articulated what good laboratory practices refer to. So GLP is really about the quality system of management controls for research laboratories and organizations. GLP in, ensures uniformity, consist, consistency, reliability, reproducibility, quality, and integrity of the chemical tests. As GLP is a quality system, it has been developed to promote uh, the quality and validity of test data using a managerial concept covering the organizational processes and conditions under which uh, laboratory studies are planned, performed, monitored, recorded, and reported. GLP does not cover, for example, scientific design. Uh, this would be covered in, for example, an OECD test guideline. It does also does not cover the interpretation of the findings of the test. GLP really, um, uh, the, pr the principles that have been outlined for GLP address the responsibility of and requirements for a test facilities organization and personnel. The principles that have been outlined um, govern the following. Conditions for establishing and maintaining test systems, receipt, handling, sampling, characterization and storage of test and reference substances, standard operating procedures, performance of the study, reporting of the results of the study, and the, importantly, the storage, retention, and retrieval of records and materials. That completes the description of the 1981 Council Act. In 1989, another council decision was put forth, this time on the aspect of compliance monitoring. So now that the GLP principles uh, had been established, um, this system was put into place to ensure compliance with the GLP principles. In this Council Act, uh, it was decided that countries shall establish national procedures to ensure uh, compliance based on lab inspections and study audits. Countries would also designate an authority or authorities for monitoring the compliance. The Council decision also recommends application of various guidance uh, in relation to compliance monitoring, and also outlines international aspects to ensure that countries recognize assurances from other countries regarding their compliance monitoring and exchange information on compliance. So based on this Council Act, in order for government to be considered as a candidate for MAD, they must have a GLP compliance monitoring program. So what is a GLP compliance monitoring program? It is this scheme that's established by a government to monitor the GLP compliance of the test facilities within its territories. The duties of this scheme are carried out by the GLP monitoring authority, who is a body established by the government with the responsibility for monitoring the good laboratory practice compliance of test facilities. 
So here is the system uh, de uh, depicted in country A. So for example, there are test facilities which are following OECD, GLP, and test guidelines. These uh, tests are producing data that uh, would be submitted to government regulators. Then we have G national GLP compliance monitoring programs which perform inspection uh, of these test uh, laboratories. Here we have um, the system uh, looking at three uh, different countries. So for example, if we have country A, Australia, producing data uh, at its GLP uh, facilities, this data could be submitted to its own receiving authority or to the receiving authority in, for example, country C. Australia could also receive data from country B where the uh, GLP testing facilities are inspected by the National Compliance Monitoring Authority of country B. And then this data is submitted to the receiving authority in Australia. So this is what we consider mutual acceptance of data between countries. These national compliance monitoring programs uh, then uh, are, are also coordinated uh, in their exchange of information. For example, if uh, uh, Australia had received data from a GLP testing facility in Canada, uh, and they had some questions about the GLP compliance, they could contact their own national compliance monitoring uh, program, which would um, liaise with their counterparts in the Canadian National Compliance Monitoring Program to, for example, um, have a uh, study audit conducted. Also, there is coordination at the OECD level between these national compliance monitoring programs in terms of uh, sharing information on uh, annual inspection of laboratories um, and um, study audits uh, that are carried out along with sharing informa additional information on compliance. In 1997, uh, another OECD Council decision was put into place to um, open uh, the door for adherence of non-members to mutual acceptance of data. So this process is articulated in the council decision and it begins with a request for provisional adherence to MAD uh, by the non-member country. Following provisional adherence, uh, there, there, um, there is a period of time um, prior to the non-member being um, evaluated uh, using an on-site evaluation uh, by their peers, uh, other uh, adherence to mutual acceptance uh, of data. Once it's satisfied that the compliance monitoring program within a country um, can uh, assess the uh, uh, compliance to GLP principles within uh, laboratories within their country, uh, they, are, they, can, they become a full adherent to mutual acceptance of data. So full adherents have the same rights and obligations as OECD member countries under the Council Acts related to MAD. Within the Council decision um, on adherence of non-members, provisional adherents are required to accept data from members and full adherents during the provisional uh, adherence process. After their evaluation and they become full adherents, then the data can flow in both directions. There are currently several non-member countries who are full adherents to MAD. Uh, these include South Africa, Singapore, India, Brazil, Argentina, Malaysia, and more recently, Thailand. Currently, there are no non-members who are provisional adherents to, uh, to MAD. So based on these three council acts, there are really three elements that come into place in order for mutual acceptance of data criteria uh, to apply. 
so the um, the test must have been conducted according to OECD test guidelines and OECD principles of GLP. The study must have been conducted in a test facility, which has been inspected by a national GLP compliance monitoring program. And thirdly, that that national GLP compliance monitoring program must have gone a, a successful evaluation by the OECD. So by the third bullet, meaning that they are adherent to uh, mutual acceptance of data. If all these three criteria are met, then all OECD member countries, as well as adherence to MAD, must accept the study data. So this uh, provided the overview of the framework of mutual acceptance of data system based on the three OECD Council Acts. So what are the, some of the benefits of MAD to a country that's thinking about moving towards uh, adherence to the MAD framework? First of all, the system ensures data quality, but it also saves OECD governments and uh, full adherence and chemical producers over 309 million euros per year. For countries that are not currently adhering to MAD, Adherence could also improve access to international chemical markets uh, for companies within those countries, providing business opportunities for testing laboratories. Also, countries that adhere, adhere to MAD um, are able to participate in the elaboration of OECD test guidelines and guidance for good laboratory practice. For further uh, information on the cost saved uh, in chemicals management and mutual acceptance of data, you can also consult this video that's on our website. This time, I'd like to thank you for listening to this introductory presentation on the mutual acceptance of data framework at the OECD. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to use this email address to contact us uh, for uh, follow-up information and discussion. Thank you very much for your attention.